All right, let's go. So, what got you interested in doing HIV research and advocacy? Well, so I started as a medical doctor, and when I started medical school was the first year that HIV was described. It wasn't called HIV. Okay. Um, and I became interested in infectious disease. I was always interested in science and how science drives medicine. Um, and so it was really a very important active issue. I think people forget how scary it was, you know, on the front page of Time magazine all the time. Mm -hmm. um, it's much more, it's strangely sort of much more effective life now. But anyway, that was, you know, when I started, and so I've been working in the field and taking care of HIV patients since the days when all my patients died. And um, as the field moved forward, and we used really science for the first time to develop the great therapies that we had today, I was still interested in how the virus could stick around, and how if we understood that, maybe we could figure out a way to actually cure infection or get rid of it to the extent that people are healthy and not infectious and don't have to take drugs anymore. So you started out treating patients rather than doing research? Um, I started um, doing medical training, treating patients. Mm -hmm. uh, then my first fellowship in infectious disease I did at the National Institutes of Health because that was a place where you could get clinical training but also get research training. And I trained in virology and HIV there. Okay. And what would you say is your favorite part of the work that you do? There's a lot of favorite parts. I guess the problem is they only come around once in a while, and in between <laughs> you have to put up with all the challenges. Mm -hmm. um, but I enjoy, I enjoy um, helping people even with pretty simple things. Um, it used to be a lot more challenging, the medical part of taking care of HIV, um, but now the tools are so great, it's almost boringly easy. Now the challenge is really finding people, getting them into care, helping them deal with the social and economic challenges of HIV. On the other side, on the science side, it's really exciting to work on something for years and see it actually move forward and see it that it actually might make a difference and to discover things that people didn't know before and then to be able to try to bring them back into medicine to, to improve medicine. Okay. Um, what can you give just some basic science information about what the biggest studies that you're doing right now on HIV to find a cure? So, um, there are various ideas about how HIV infection could be eradicated or completely inactivated in some ways in a person. And the main idea that we've been pursuing for over 10 years now, and is now one of, if not the main idea, that most groups in the world are pursuing, not to say that it will work, but it's what it is now, is the idea that virus stops, that drug therapy stops the ability of virus to grow and escape um, drug therapy in the body. So people in therapy now, they're essentially in a stable, healthy condition, and if they can get on therapy and stay on therapy, they should be in great shape. Um, but to be able to remove the virus, remove therapy, and have not have virus come back, we have to get at the virus that is able to persist and survive for years despite therapy. So that's thought to be a two-part process. The first is that without stopping therapy, so that the therapy can hold the virus in check, to attack the virus and force it to come out of hiding so that it can be seen. And then the second step would be to put in place some sort of tool probably an immune system tool, an immune response, to see that very rare, hidden, formerly hidden virus and get rid of it. That's what people call the shock and kill. I hate that term because mm -hmm. it sounds both scary and easy. And it shouldn't be scary, but it's not going to be easy. Okay. And um, so why, do, why would you say that research costs so much money? 
Well, I think all research costs a lot of money because I think you might be able to sort of see around us, we're in our lab. Um, there's a lot of very sort of high technology, um, expensive things we have to do. Um, all the easy stuff has been done. We're now up to the hard stuff. Um, and it's research. So, um, and research means trying and failing 99 times before something works once. Uh, it's, um, and it's very, a lot of it is, um, I think people don't appreciate how many failures you have to have to have a success. Um, I can't remember the number, but it's thought that the drug interest rate, for instance, spends something like more than $10 billion to develop a single drug that can move forward. Um, and probably basic research is probably even more expensive because it's um, even more trial and error in a way uh, and um, difficult to predict where things will go. Okay. And um, what are your thoughts on other scientists who are claiming they're making significant strides in finding a cure for HIV? Well, I think it would have to go to the specific claim okay. uh, and what people are exactly saying. I think the field is making advances. I think we have to remember that it took really almost 20 years to develop therapy to really the good place that it is now. And that was a huge investment of governments and drug industry and time. Um, and so I think we're making good progress considering the challenge, difficulty of the problem. And compared to other efforts, the resources put into it now are really not so great. I mean, they're great, but they're not proportional to the amount of effort, for instance, that was needed to develop current therapy. Then there's the challenge that people either, one, really believe in what they're doing, and number two, they have to show success at some times, mm -hmm. otherwise everyone's discouraged and nobody wants to do the work anymore. Um, so I think there's a lot of pressure to overclaim and overhype uh, to make it understandable and sexy and get more support for research. And that's a pretty tough thing to avoid. Um, so I wish it wouldn't happen, uh, but it does all the time. So I think one specific claim, and this is something that I really need to address in the community engagement, is there's claims of, you know, um, having a natural diet and um, or getting rid of mucus in the body or things like that that people are claiming they can cure you of all diseases based just based on natural diet and getting mu rid of mucus in the body. What would you say about that? Um, so those sorts of claims I think don't have much scientific support and I don't want to just you know brush off things because people have experiences where they take a diet and it makes them feel better or something like that. I, you can't argue against you know what people really experience but if you're talking about something as serious as HIV infection or curing HIV infection, there should really be proof, scientific proof, analyzable and by people, all sorts of doctors and scientists all over the world, and everyone should be able to agree. And somebody who isn't able to publish this result in a real journal for everybody to actually see what the information is, to analyze it, and most importantly, to reproduce it. Right is very important. So um, we have a lot of good therapies for HIV now that work. We need a cure for HIV someday, but we don't need it tomorrow. Mm -hmm. it, we need to get there the right way, the safe way, the way that really works. And so any of these claims really have to stand up under the light of day and the careful scrutiny of, of all of the community. Okay. And one last, I know I didn't put this on here, but this is also just kind of driving home the point. Um, this idea that pharmaceutical companies and the government are keeping a cure from the community because they want to make money off of the treatment that's already happening before they then make money off of a cure. Um, you know, 
that I can see how that would make sense. It makes sense in a sort of evil scheming economic mm -hmm. way. Um, but I mean, I wish it were true because then we could just go break down the doors and find the cure. It's not that easy. We're um, probably years away from an actual cure unless there's some really unexpected breakthrough. Um, and there's would be so much benefit in all sorts of different ways to um, ridding people of HIV infection in a simple way if we could do it. Um, that that those. Those are sort of just, I think, really not rational statements that people make. Okay. And what role do you think the community has in finding a cure for HIV? I think the community has a big role, not just in finding a cure for HIV, but for controlling and eventually getting rid of the pandemic of HIV in the world. Finding a cure is part of that. Um, so the community has a big role in preventing the spread of HIV infection, preventing the stigma for people that have HIV infection, supporting people with HIV infection to get medical therapy so that the impact of HIV on the world can be shrunk to very little, and then to supporting the work in the years that will take to find a cure that I think we can find. Uh, and so this combination of all of these efforts can really, I think, over decades, um, perhaps eliminate HIV from the world. That's a long distant goal, but I think if we join together, it can be done. Okay. Thank you. Do you have any last words? Mm, no. Okay.